right, all right. Hey there, good morning. What's going on everybody? Monday morning, 8.14 in the morning as I begin this and getting ready to get the show on the road. It's gonna be a splendastic day today. I certainly hope that it will be. That's me being optimistic. Uh, trying to look at the glass half full. Forgive the lighting, I'm back to filming in 60 frames per second, 1080. And got some nails in the wall. Uh, I got a hammer to get that one out. A couple of little nipple lights up in this unit. Hey, this is a real baby unit right here. This is just a little one bedroom. I mean, look how big the living room is. This thing has got to be, has got to be. I don't know, about 400 square feet, maybe. Probably about that, that's what I would assume. So this is gonna be super easy. I'm actually gonna spray this whole unit with this guy right here. Yeah, I am about to get, about to get into it uh, pretty quick. But the first thing that we gotta figure out is what color are these walls? We know they're not white because there's white up there. This is looking a little shell whitish to me and I'm hoping that's what it is because that's what I got. I got shell white right there. Damn GoPro was trying to figure out which direction to go. All right, so where do I begin? I've got so much to share with you. I've got a story that I wanna share with you guys that I think is pretty crazy. Uh, but the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna test paint on the walls. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Put you guys right there. I got my handy dandy paintbrush right here. And I'm not gonna open that full five, that's flat. This is semi-gloss. We're gonna test with our semi-gloss because this one is pretty easy to work with. It's almost empty. Uh, this paint is paint that I purchased for another property. So we're using it here. And they're going to pay for this paint here as well. All right, we got our paint on our lid. Semi-gloss for your wet areas kitchens and baths go ahead and set that guy right there what are the chances this paint is going to match all right <gasps> perfect for joe is a a color coordinator right here man that is exactly what that is that's shell white can't even tell any difference at all cool so we got her Right here, we know what we need. Shell white is gonna work magnificent. All right, good deal. All right, so as we begin this, let me just tell you that a unit like this, this damn small, and in this condition should only take like two hours tops. One guy, two hours, you don't do any ceilings. Ceilings are fine. We're not gonna mess with any of that, maybe we will. Um, the crown or the, the actual baseboard that they use this crown up there, we're not gonna mess with any of that unless it needs it. And it kind of looks like it needs it, don't it? Uh, we got some flat paint on the ceiling right there. I've got every color that we need to be able to do this. Um, the one thing that I don't have is a caulk gun. So I've literally got a tube of caulk. I got plenty of caulk, no caulk gun. Uh, my caulk guns, a million of them, are probably with my top guy who is having car trouble this morning. <sighs> We've got a tube of caulk. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna bust a hole through this tube of caulk and we're gonna use it for any nail holes that we come across. And there's a few in here. Look at that terrible shit right there. Um, we're gonna caulk up up there. We really need a caulk gun for that. But uh, yeah. I do have my new guy meeting me out here this morning and hopefully he has a caulk gun that would actually be quite helpful but let's go ahead and get rocking and rolling on this unit 
and try to get this thing done as quickly as possible so that we can carry on with the day. Now we were supposed to have two units going this morning, but I think one unit we've already done, they gave me a different address, but I think it's the same address for the same, I think it's a different address for the same place that we've already done because when I try to GPS the address, nothing comes up at all. And the only thing even close to that is a unit that we've already done. I'm gonna get confirmation on that in just a little bit, but the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get to work. So let's get this unit knocked out and share more in just a little bit. Full battery on that guy right there. I didn't think about the doors in here neither. There's only like, there's only like three doors in here. Uh, they need to be painted. When you don't got a caulk gun, paint in 30 minutes. This is a different caulk gun I used. When you don't got a caulk gun, you gotta work with what you got and make what you got work. Uh, this will be a mess for certain. This will be a mess. Look at that. Here's my caulk gun. Check that guy out. Make it work. There we go. A couple of nail holes. Fill those guys in. Yes, sir. So yeah, I'm probably not gonna be able to work. Actually, not probably. I definitely ain't gonna be able to work all of my guys today. It's just not gonna work out. We don't have enough work. We were only having two units today, and for this week. We don't got a whole hell of a lot going on. We've got ooh, a couple of repairs to do at a couple of different places. Uh, some subfloor work to do again. And that's about it. Uh, we may pick up some units. Hopefully we do. We need to work. So yeah, hopefully it's gonna, this week is gonna improve from where it's looking right now. Actually. Uh, let me rephrase that. Hopefully this whole month is going to improve because I have nothing on the schedule for, for April. And in fact, um, I do have a residential job to do tomorrow, but that's really a one-man job. I might put two guys on. It should just be a one-day job. Uh, it's just a small little kitchen and bathroom to paint and then the back door to paint. I can hear the people above us and I wonder if they can hear me as well. I'm trying to be respectful. It is only 8.30 in the morning. So when you don't have a caulk gun, you make a caulk gun. Yes, you do. You make a caulk gun. Boy, these people were hanging shit everywhere. On base, on, 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 on windows, casings. And they were hanging shit everywhere. All right. But oh, I shouldn't be surprised. Guess what? More nails. Over here in the corner. morning a lot of times you got to troubleshoot you make sure that uh, you work with whatever you got and a lot of times that's exactly what you got to do check out all the walls tons of nail holes over here they hung every picture they ever had up here this looks like a damn they, get, they probably have more shit hanging on their wall than a damn prison cell see how I did that more shit hanging on the walls in here than a prison cell. That's a bar right there. That is a bar. More nail holes. 
How they had shit right up on the refrigerator. That's, I mean, right there. God bless it. I would imagine over here too, because you put shit on every damn wall. All right, I've already been on this wall. Check. Let's check these walls. Yep, we got stuff in these walls as well. Put you guys right there so you can work with Joe. is the cracks in the crown let me get my ladder and get on that that's gonna be fun there are some decent cracks in that All right, everything is caulked up. We're gonna let this dry and then we will get into painting. Back at my favorite filming location, the parking lot. All right, hey, what's going on? It's Monday afternoon, early afternoon. I've got to get back to the house. My babysitter is only available till two o'clock today. So picking up from where we left off earlier, I got that unit painted. I, I said that unit was gonna take two hours. It ended up taking a little bit longer than that. It took us about three and a half hours. Uh, but I had my new guy come out there and help me with it. And it still took three and a half hours. I sprayed it. I ran a good majority of the trim and doors and he helped paint the kitchens and bathrooms and then run the rest of the trim and doors. Baby unit. The thing was only about 400 square feet. which wasn't shit to it. But it still took us three and a half hours and that was flying. You know, it's safe to say that <clears throat> I've got um, a little bit of a bigger stomach than my appetite has it. My eyes are bigger than my stomach. Something like that when it comes to the timeline for being able to get these things done. You know, ultimately, I would have loved to see that unit get done in two hours, but these things take time. Even small units take time. You got to go in there and prep. You got to get everything ready. You got to clean up. It takes time. Trimming doors take time. Painting the walls is usually the easiest part. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, so we got that unit done. <clears throat> there was another repair that I was supposed to go look at for that company, and I call that company Danny's Old Apartment Company. Uh, the property that I've spoken about that's way out yonder, all their properties are way out there. Anyway, so there was this other job I was supposed to go look at. It was a bathroom ceiling. I messaged or I emailed the people saying, hey, are we still good to look at that job today? Because that's when we had talked about seeing it, and they were like, yes. So they sent me the address, but they only sent me the number. They didn't tell me the street or anything like that. So I'm trying to find this place. And then I get a phone call from the lady saying, hey, I'm here, where are you? And I'm like, I don't even know where the hell I'm going. I'm, I'm trying to find it. I find it, I get there. And we go up to the unit 
and she's like, oh shit, there's not a, there's not a number keypad here. I don't have the key. I got to go get the key. So she leaves to go get the key. That takes about 15 minutes. I'm standing there waiting. She comes back with the key. The key, the keys don't work. So she's leaving and she's on the phone with her boss and literally just leaving. I'm telling her, look, I, I've got somewhere I've got to be. I, I don't have all day to sit out here. I, I'm wanting to say, hey, can we reschedule this? But she's already getting in her car when she's like, hey, the other lady, she's going to come bring the key. And then she just hauls ass. And I'm like, I don't have time to, to sit out here. So I messaged the other lady. I say, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't have time to, to wait around. Um, can you take pictures of whatever it is? Send me those pictures. And then, you know, I'll let you know when and how much. About five minutes later, she messaged me. and She's like, hey, I'll be there in five minutes. And I'm like, I'm already gone. I, I've got places I got to be. I said, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm already gone. I got shit I'm trying to get done today. She would tell me, well, I guess we got to find somebody else or we're not going to be able to use you anymore or something. Yeah, she said, well, I guess we're just not going to be able to use you anymore. And I'm thinking to myself, yo, we've been bending over backwards, traveling all over hell and back for these damn units, busting our ass on these units. And you're going to get rid of me just that quick. Um, over the fact that I, I can't wait around all day. It just goes to show you, you know, no matter how much you do, as soon as something doesn't go their way, they're quick to say they're going to get rid of you. And touche. You know, if that's what they want to do, it's probably for the better. It's, it's a far place to go to for a clusterfuck every time we go out there they'll tell me there's two units going and there's never two units going it's always one and the other unit's been painted or the other unit doesn't even exist and the address is a street with no house or no apartment on it uh, that was what i dealt with this morning looking for the other address i messaged about that i said hey are you sure like we even have a unit here and this is not the same unit that we painted last week and you're just giving me a different address for it and, and they never responded so it's been a little bit of a headache dealing with that shit. Um, but shit, we got fired, <laughs> it feels like. And we got fired because we couldn't wait and we were out there waiting for 20 minutes and you didn't have the keys and whatever. Not gonna bitch about it, just sharing how much of a pain in the ass this is all the time, unfortunately. Uh, so anyways, I had to haul ass from there, go finish up the unit that we were doing this morning, got that done, loaded out, cleaned up, and then, and it sucked going back to finish that unit, knowing that uh, we're basically fired, well, we, you, you told me you can't use us anymore, so I guess we're fired, but anyways, we got that done, got that cleaned up, and then I had to go look at some repair work at another property that was way far away from all of that, back in the neck of woods where we normally work at. And it's a drywall repair job. I'll show you a picture of it right here. The whole ceiling about to collapse over uh, some lady's bed. We're going to get on that tomorrow. That's the quickest that we can get on that. We've got a residential job to do tomorrow. And we've got another job to do. Prime and paint an HVAC closet and then replace a cabinet. All the while, I don't have a babysitter this week. Uh, i got to be back at my house at 2 o'clock because my babysitter is only available till 2 today. And she's not available for the rest of the week. So me and my wife have to figure out uh, watching our son in the midst of both having jobs in this business. I fear that I'm going to be taking Liam to work with me. And so will my wife probably for some of this week. Obviously, I can't have my son around paint or drywall dust or anything like that. But we're going to have to figure this damn thing out and figure it out quick. If anybody knows a babysitter, we need one. But I want to share a story with you guys. I was talking about I had a story to share with you, and I'm going to try to do so quickly. Uh, this is a story about helping a guy out. Uh, there was a maintenance man at a property that fired us. 
another property that fired us over um, nickel and diming us on units, bringing in another painter, all of that good jazz. Uh, this maintenance man at this property, I call him Jekyll and Hyde because some days he would be cool and other days he was a real pain in the ass to deal with. He nitpicked a lot of things. Uh, some of the things I felt like he nitpicked were not things that needed to be nitpicked, dust on windows, calling it overspray, like, and it wasn't overspray, it was literally drywall dust, and not even that much of it, but anyways, so the story is about this maintenance man who, you know, I worked with this guy for over two and a half years at that property, and all of a sudden, that property got bought out by another, pro or another company, and he didn't have a job. For some reason, he didn't have a job, and he said, you know, he gave me this story about why he didn't have a job, and the story was kind of skeptical, whether or not that was actually the truth or not. Uh, I, I share that because there's more to that coming in a minute. So here's this guy who doesn't have a job, who's kind of been a pain in the ass to deal with, and my wife runs another property, and she needed a maintenance man. So I tell this guy, hey, you know, my wife works at this other property. She needs a maintenance man. You can go get a job there and they pay really good. So he goes and gets the job with my wife. I help him get the job. My wife helps him get the job. But it's found out when he gets hired that he doesn't have a driver's license. And I think that that was why he lost the job when the new company bought out the property he was working at. He didn't have a driver's license, couldn't get a driver's license. So they weren't going to hire him on. So he gets hired on at my wife's property under the, you know, the, um, what's the word under the assumption, not the assumption under the thing <laughs> that he's going to get his driver's license and he has a month to do it. Well, a month passes and he doesn't get the driver's license. So last week they literally gave him the day off. It was the last day that he could go get this driver's license. And he, um, he leaves to go get the driver's license and he, he doesn't get the driver's license. He would say, Hey, look, I'm not going to be able to get my driver's license. It's going to take me a while. I'm going to go ahead and turn in my keys. I quit. So this kind of hits my wife out of the blue. Like what the, actually not really. She kind of assumed that that was what was going to happen. But during the month that this guy was there, he brought in another guy who was really good. He brought in a maintenance tech from the other property that they worked at together and the maintenance tech was great. Uh, the maintenance supervisor, the guy I helped get the job, he wasn't that great. In fact, he wasn't doing shit for the entire month that he was there. He was not doing anything, just acting like he was doing shit or doing his job. So the short of it is, they gave this guy a month to get his license. He doesn't get his license, so he quits last week. And my wife is like, oh shit, you know, now I need another maintenance guy, uh, maintenance supervisor. She, she, so she wanted to promote the guy that he brought. She liked him a lot. He was a really competent guy. Well, she calls him into her office, the maintenance tech. And she's like, hey, I, I'm sure you've heard what's going on with the other guy. And before she can even say, you know, I want to extend the invitation to you to be the maintenance supervisor. He was like, yeah, yeah, I, I heard today was his last day. And as a matter of fact, today's my last day as well. I quit. And that, you know, leaves my wife with no maintenance staff. Um, and you kind of feel like that the guy that had to get fired or had to quit because he couldn't get his license told this guy to jump off the bridge with him. Hey, man, I'm out of here, man. You coming with me? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what kind of loyalty do you have to this dude? Like, why would you mess up a great job? This was a job that was paying both of these guys a lot more money than they were making at the other property with a hell of a lot more benefits, including free health care for the both of them. Amongst other things, cell phone allowance, car payment allowance, like just crazy and bonuses out of this world. So the maintenance tech quits and just hauls ass off the property. So, you know, we kind of feel like, my wife feels like, and I, and I feel like too, you know, that that guy just took advantage of the situation, the maintenance supervisor guy, just took advantage of the situation for the time that he was there. And then when it was time for 
you know, to uh, show that he got his license, he knew that he wasn't going to do that, and he quit, and he took the guy or, you know, convinced the other guy to quit as well. I share that with you because it's a real dick move, it feels like to me. And two and a half years I dealt with this guy at the other property where I had to really bite my tongue a lot of times when I really wanted to tell him about himself. Like, man, you just ain't shit. And now leaving my wife in the bind that she's in, um, you know, now I really feel like I want to tell, I, I want to share something else. I get the guy a job and the first day that he's there, he's trying to take my wife to lunch. No one full good and well, that's my wife. I'm like, damn, man, you're trying to make moves on my wife. Like, you really ain't shit. So a part of me feels like I want to call the guy and be like, hey, man, I just want to tell you about yourself. For two and a half years, I put up with your shit, and I really hated that. And I didn't really care for you too much. And the way that you did my wife doing her dirty and, you know, dragging the job along and taking advantage of the situation and milking it and not helping her out none, Man, you ain't shit for that neither. And then having this other guy quit too, you really ain't shit for that. Trying to take my wife to lunch and shit. Anyways, I share that story with you because I, you know, I really want to call the guy. I want to film it too. Go in on him. Make a make a mean video about it. Not like a being mean video, but make like a interesting video about it. But I know that's not the professional thing to do. So I probably won't. You let me know what you think about all of that. I'm curious to know. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I tried to showcase some of the work with you. I wanted to showcase way more of it. Joe painting, Joe paint stuff here on After Prison Show. I know there's comments of people who are not really feeling this whole business vlog shit that I'm doing on this channel and I promise you I'm going to improve the content one way or another I will improve the content here uh, it is my hope to be able to do so because I truly feel like I don't got too much longer left in this painting game I'm giving this my all and today another perfect example of no matter how much you bend over they will still royally screw you in the end when it doesn't suit their every need. I saw a picture of Wes Watson with P. Diddy. Somebody had made a comment about that saying, Joe, you really need to address that situation. There's a lot of shit going on with P. Diddy right now. And uh, I don't know what the hell Wes Watson's doing with him. He's like an A-list celebrity at this point. That guy has blown up. He took prison YouTube and did what you absolutely should do with prison YouTube. If there's anybody to look up to with prison YouTube, it's that guy. And I'm not just saying that because he's a big guy who could probably whoop my ass. I'm being serious when I say that guy has become immensely successful. Me, on the other hand, <laughs> I have been one bad plan and idea after another, unfortunately. And I look at how far Wes Watson's got since he's been home from prison, and I look at how far I've got. I'm surprised I'm not on drugs, just to be honest with you. Because this shit's killing me. But I'm wealthy in other ways. I've got a healthy, beautiful baby boy I've got an amazing wife that loves me and supports me and all of my crazy ideas. I've got dogs. I've got Aggie. I've got this van. Which, that's a material thing that doesn't mean shit, but yeah. Anyways. Hey, thanks for allowing me to share. Uh, hope this was a video you guys enjoyed and... I look forward to sharing more with you real soon. Until then, take care.